I'm Stephen Valenta, <laughs> and uh, this is my wife, Jaylene Valenta, <laughs> and today we are <laughs> we are going before the Lord to renew our vows together. Uh, we've been married uh, for five years. Five years ago, um, we just we initially we just went and we eloped. We got eloped. Is that how you say it? We eloped. <laughs> And um, it was really a spur of the moment kind of like decision where we just like one weekend or one week we're like, hey, let's go to the courthouse and let's get married. And we just, I think the process maybe took like an hour. Five years ago, we were not saved. Yeah. So we had like many, many married couples out there. We went through our highs and our lows, a lot of lows. A lot of rough patches, especially with, um, I guess, just the stress of his work and mine as well. And we convinced our, yeah, we convinced ourselves everything's okay. That it was still right, a good marriage. Just normal, that you know, everybody, everybody goes, goes through, through it. This. Everybody goes through it, and that we would like eventually get over it. And it actually got so bad, like our marriage got so bad, and we went through. Uh, such a rough patch that we actually almost we were very close to um, just separating you know, getting divorced and moving on I met like I well we didn't talk about it I just on my own decided I don't want to be in this marriage anymore. she was going through a rough patch between postpartum and just the stress of life and all, all while this is happening I'm, I'm basically just drinking all the time and being drunk so I'm not helping the situation at all and, and you know kind of contributing to like her her emotions and feelings to work towards it so kind of driving her as well as well as myself to that point of, of almost not being together anymore. To sum it up the Lord by his grace and his mercy he he showed me and he revealed to me just how um, how sinful I was he like where my eyes were veiled um, just one day it was literally just one day and he just I just felt the weight the weight of all of my sin and and how I was destined that I deserve to be in hell for eternity and that if that I needed a savior from that. he basically brought me down to my knees and he he drew me in like and after you know i know i broke down in that moment i i cried my heart cried out to to him and i repented and from there i wanted to live my life um, live a life that was start to i wanted to start living a life that was pleasing to him over time as she started to get closer to the lord it drew me closer as well. Uh, and then I started like studying my Bible, I started praying, started you know, actually, you know, I was inquisitive, I was like, okay, you know what, I really wanna see what this is like about because I thought I knew it as a kid, um, but I really didn't. And I was starting to come to that realization. One, one Super Bowl Sunday, I had, I had gotten <laughs> really drunk and uh, it, I, I found myself just lying down in, in, in the shower in the bathroom thinking like, why, why am I doing this? Why is this like this, you know? Um, why am I being this way? And uh, it kind of just like popped in my head like, you know, I can't keep doing this. I can't keep confessing to, to be a Christian and still live this way because it's, you know, I, I'm confessing Christ with my lips, but not with my actions. And, and so from there, I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna make a commitment to, to stop drinking. The Lord opened my eyes to what had happened in the past regarding me and her, and it really, that's when all the weight of it really hit. It was like, wow, this is everything that your, you know, your drinking caused. You know, it, it wasn't just a sin to the Lord. Like it is so destructive, and it almost hurt my marriage. But um, after that, it was like, you know. I, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to do my life to the Lord. And, you know, all the glory and praise be to Him. Because if not, then I, would, I have no idea where I would be today. So, and, now, and now, through His um, 
grace, of course, all only by His grace alone, and um, strengthened in Christ, are we able to to now live lives that are um, to live our lives in the manner in which we are called, yeah. and now we um, have that desire to just have a marriage that reflects uh, the Christ and the church. Yeah. And we are, we have that desire, you know, we have the desire to, to just be um, faithful stewards and servants and servants to Him, and, you know, in the way that we, we serve one another and in the way that we um, disciple our children and shepherd their hearts. Before anything else, I want to praise and thank God for this opportunity to reaffirm our wedding vows before Him. When I was younger, I would dream about the kind of man I would marry, and truly, God is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. I promise to never make our relationship the center focus, but rather to make the gospel the mission of our marriage. I promise that you will never be responsible for my happiness that I will always look to Christ and remember the sufficiency of His grace, that I promise to always pray for you, to pray that God would continue to draw you closer to Him, and that He would continue to guide and shape you into the man that He has designed you to be. And finally, I promise to love you as Jesus loved us, sacrificially and unconditionally. When we first got married, we didn't know the Lord. We were just two people who got together because we loved each other and we just assumed everything would be easy and our lives would just fall into place like a happy fairy tale. But little did we know, God had other plans for our lives. Although we've had our fair share of trials, God has used those trials for our good by bringing us closer to Him through Christ. And through Christ, He has shown not only you, but myself as well, what true love is and how it is exemplified and how a godly marriage should be lived. And specifically for me, he has shown me how the role of a husband who loves God should be lived. So just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, I vow to love you and give myself up for you in the same manner. I promise to always be faithful to you and to always be honest with you. I will always respect you, trust you, and care for you. I promise to always help you and guide you as your husband, as well as be considerate of the advice that you give me. I promise to always be gentle and humble and patient and to always forgive you of your faults just as God has forgiven me. I promise to make every effort to keep ourselves united in the spirit by binding myself to you through peace and I vow to never dishonor you to always have my highest desire and to always have my highest desire to be that we grow in our relationship with the Lord not just as husband and wife but as two that are equally yoked. And finally, I promise that no matter what happens, for better or worse, to always seek and trust in God. Proverbs 31, 30 states that charm is deceptive and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. And I am so incredibly blessed beyond measure to be with a God-fearing wife like you. I love you, Jalen and Valenta, forever and always, and I can't wait to see what God has in store for our lives. Your union with Christ is the most important thing about your marriage. You see, seeking your union in Christ leads to greater unity and greater harmony with one another. So in this dance of marriage, may you remember who put this dance together and may you follow him. And when you follow that oneness in Christ, you will grow closer toward one another.